Hello and welcome to Whimsy Creek Art. All right, today is episode four of our Basics of Paint Pour series. And just to remind you, we're using this 24 piece Craft Smart set. So in this video, I'm using the bright yellow, the red, the orange, the black, and the bright pink. And so episode one was supplies, then episode two was how to mix the paint and my paint recipe, my pouring medium to paint ratios. So I will link down below all the other episodes if you would like to start back if you missed episode one or two or even three. So, all right, it's all mixed just the same consistency as all the other ones we've done. It pours off the end of the stick real well. And so we're using 10 by 10 inch canvases and we're going to do the puddle pour technique so we're going to do three canvases so the and there's no silicone today these are just paint and floetrol so we're going to go ahead and do four little puddles here of the black And then the red, I wanted to show you how the red looks kind of light, almost a pinkish, but once it dries, it'll dry more true to color, a true red color. So just puddling a little bit of each color in the middle here. And this is a great beginner paint pour. This, any skill level can do these puddle pours. And you can do them any different color combinations. These are great uh, technique to do with colors that are maybe super contrasting colors that would normally maybe muddy up and make browns and colors maybe you weren't looking for. Um, the puddle pour technique is a great technique to do and you don't have to really worry about it muddying up all that much. So we're going to do three different puddle pours and so this puddle pour you can see I am I've actually gotten a couple of drops there, and you're going to see the drops in the end, actually, and unfortunately, that was kind of a too bad of an accident, but I'm going to show you, see how I dropped some of that red there, but um, I should have been a little bit more careful with that, but the next pour, I'm going to show you how that's okay that I would drop some drips and how you would remedy that. So this one, you won't really see it too much, so it's not a big deal. So I'm just showing a great beginner paint pour. So even I make mistakes and drop a couple of drips there, no worries, no big deal. So we're just going through a little bit of each of the colors, putting a little bit less and less pouring out each time. Gonna get, end it with the black here. And then we're just going to tilt it all around. We've got a few drips, but that's okay. So we're just tilting it to each of the corners, kind of. We're going to go around the couple of times because you don't want just circles of the paint. This kind of breaks up that kind of flow of it and makes it more organic shapes there. So I kind of like to circle around a couple of times and then go to each of the corners, each of the edges. So you kind of do see those trips quite prominently. No big deal. Also, I want to point out my black and yellow were right next to each other. So see that right edge? You can kind of see where it almost gives a green cast to it because the black and the yellow are right together. Now the next pour I do, I make sure not to have the black and yellow together. I isolate those out with different colors and don't, do not pour them in the cup with the black and yellow right next to each other. And so you can see that slight difference will make a big difference in 
not having that kind of green tint to it from the yellow and black being right next to each other but these paints um, didn't create that too much just slightly there on the edges so all right we have another 10 by 10 inch canvas same colors and no silicone again but we're gonna go ahead and do another puddle pour and you're gonna see how I'm gonna layer those colors here in just a second and with the yellow not together with the black and then this puddle pour we're gonna kind of what they say wreck it or we're gonna use a steel ball bearing or you can use a marble and we're gonna run that through it and so if you were to drip any drips I actually don't end up dripping too many drips in this one but um, if you were to drip any drips, no big deal, because when you run the marble or the steel ball bearing through the pour, it's, it kind of would cover up any drips that maybe you had gotten in there. So I'm just going ahead and I put the yellow down, but now I put a little bit of more orange and then I'm gonna put the black so that the yellow and the black are not right by each other. Just that little bit of orange creates that barrier and then you don't get that kind of yellow, like greenish cast. Cause if you have mixed uh, yellow paint and black paint together, you're gonna get kind of a greenish color. And so uh, like on the first one, right on the edges when the green or the yellow and black created kind of a green color so all right we're just putting a little bit more here of each of the colors and then we're gonna go ahead and put a little bit I'm gonna put a little bit of black on the upper edge here just to kind of start that marble in the black to pull that black all through was actually steel ball bearing and I did a video where I compared using a marble or a steel ball bearing there's not a huge difference but I did prefer the steel ball bearing but if you don't have one a marble works just as fine and this technique does work a little bit better on a bigger canvas but we're just using these 10 by 10 inch canvases for this series so I'm adding just a little bit of that black on those edges because um, it kind of everything's flowing to my left. I, the, one of the biggest things is you want to make sure your canvas is level. This one looks like it may not be level and I'll need to check it out when I'm all done. So all right, I'm just running that marble through a little bit while also paying attention to getting it to the edge. And it did come off and fall there on the, into the cup or the pan there, no big deal. Gonna pick it up and just put it back on there and roll it around a little bit more. And you can roll it around as much as you want. I didn't want a smaller canvas, you don't want to roll it around too much, but a bigger canvas you can roll it around a little bit more. But just that little bit of difference with pulling that steel ball bearing through those colors, kind of breaking up the monotony of the puddles, kind of creates a different look. And then also isolating that yellow with, from the black with that little bit of orange also made a big difference. So just the slight varying changes can make just a really big difference. So th this is just another example of a great super beginner basic paint pour. All right, so now we're going to do another paint pour, another puddle pour but a little bit of variation of the same technique of a puddle pour. So now we're gonna go ahead and take those same colors, no silicone again, and we're just layering one puddle in the middle. So the last two pours, we did four puddles. For this size canvas, I'm gonna just do one pour puddle in the middle. And so you're gonna see I did drip, no big deal. I'm gonna show you here. You can also just kinda use the tip of your glove to kinda gently dip in there and just pick up that drip. If it's just a small drip, no big deal. You can actually get that out. So, all right. Now, each time that you are 
So I started off with like a pretty large puddle and then each puddle I've gone through I'm kind of putting just slightly less the same amount or less paint. So if you put too much paint each puddle you're just gonna run right over your other colors and so you see that my first couple of puddles I've kind of ran over those actually. So now I'm just putting a little bit, little bit, layering up that puddle. And so what I'm going to do here is I would like a little bit of negative space. So in art, negative space is just kind of some of the, you've got a focal point to your painting and then you've got some space that is just a plain color. It can be any plain color. In this case, our negative space is going to be some black. But in this one, we don't want to run this all the way to the edge because it would run off super easily. So we're going to create some negative space by putting some black all around the edge of this. So what we're going to do here, once we get it all puddled up real nicely, we're going to take a popsicle stick and just run a popsicle stick through it down to the center. Just run it through down to the center. And you're gonna see I'm gonna do that over and over again to kind of create kind of an abstract, kind of a 3D flower design. And so each time that I run it through, I wipe it on. I have, um, I actually have an old sock that I'm using as a rag. And so I just run the popsicle stick through and then I wipe it off clean. Then I run it through, wipe it off clean. And so that kind of creates, you know, your lines through as nice and clean if you wipe it off each time. So I'm just adding some of that black around the edge before I go ahead and do the popsicle stick trick. I'm just getting some black around the edge just to create some negative space here. And we'll pull it all the way to the edge here in just a moment, that black. So I'm deciding I need just a little bit of more color here in the center little bit more puddles of color and then we're gonna end with yellow in the center so once we get uh, all puddled here enough paint we're gonna go ahead and then pull the popsicle stick through and um, this one we're not going to tilt we're not going to really tilt this one and stretch it to the edges because if I didn't really want to ruin the design I mean you could have tilted this one but I don't want to tilt it because uh, it would might have just pulled the design uh, kind of awkward you know, oblong or something so all right now we're just pulling the popsicle stick through to the center and then don't worry about the center, what it looks like. Just wipe your popsicle stick clean each time, then pull it through. And then what I'm gonna do to kind of clean up the center and make the center look a little bit better is I'm just gonna kind of swirl the popsicle stick through the middle. So what you can do if you want, you can also, um, so once we go all the way around it and go into the center, you can go each one of those and out to the outside as well. But that's kind of a little bit more um, later on, we'll do one like that. But this one, we're just doing a very basic beginner technique. So we're just pulling it off to the center each time. Now we're just gonna swirl the middle to just kind of make it look a little bit better. And so, all right, that was episode four, and this was the puddle pour technique. Now I do have all episodes one, two, and three down below, I'll have in the description. I will have those uh, links if you would like to, if you missed episodes one, two, or three. So now I just have a plastic palette knife and I'm just pulling that black to the edge here to kind of create. What I like about the black is these brighter, um, pinks and orange and yellow really pop on that black so I really like that so all right I hope this um it, you were able to get any tips or tricks or information from this video but the next episode will be the flip cup so the next one episode five of this series will be a flip cup so please let me know if you have any questions for one.
watching. I really appreciate it.